It looks like rain again today. We have had rain for like the last five days straight. We needed it, but everything in moderation, my goodness. And when we get rain, we end up with wet and worms and booby butts on the dough kit on some of the kids. And uh, so it's time to do some fecal samples. Let me show you how. I'm going to show you some of the supplies that you need to do this. Obviously, the first thing that you're going to need is a microscope. Um, this is going to be the most expensive thing, but it doesn't have to be all that expensive. What I've got here is just a student microscope, you see, and it's got um, three magnifications, 4, 10, and 40. And the four is actually enough for me to see the eggs. It's really all you need. Um, I just advertised in our homeschool group that I needed a microscope and did anyone have one used? I think I got this one plus all the slides for like a hundred bucks. So you don't need anything fancy and when you think about it, you know, you do a couple of samples, you send them off to the, the vet to do it at 10 bucks a pop or 15 bucks a pop, you paid for your microscope pretty fast. Next thing you're going to need is a flotation solution. And there are directions online for how to make your own from um, like Epsom salts and you just need like a really concentrated solution. It's just this extra work. Um, so I went on Amazon and I bought this one. And I think this gallon was like maybe 30 bucks delivered. And I've had it for a couple of years now and you see I've only used about half of it. So it lasts you an awfully long time. So I would just invest in this. And then just some odds and ends kind of things. Um, well, this is not necessarily an odds and ends. If you want to do a McMaster sample, which is the one that um, you can count the number of eggs per gram and it uses like a little grid uh, system. And this is what a lot of the vets and labs and everything uses this McMaster. This little slide here, it's expensive. It costs like 30 bucks for this thing. Um, but you only need one and it lasts you forever. You don't have to do it this way, and I'm gonna show you how, if you just wanna see if there are any eggs in your sample, how to do it just using a plain old glass slide and cover. So we're gonna do that as well. Hey, okay, Katie. Now, odds and ends, um, plastic knives to mush your poop up with. Um, you're gonna need a little sieve um, to strain your sample and just get the liquid out. Um, it says an eyedropper, but I always just use a little syringe to draw up some of the sample. And you're gonna need a couple of little beakers for measuring your flotation solution. I use one for my flotation solution and one to mush my poo up in. And then a bigger beaker cup to pour, pour, the, um, pour it through. I'll show you how do we do this. Um, then if you're gonna do the other method, not using the McMaster slide, you'll need a test tube, a plain slide, and a glass slide cover. One thing I forgot to talk about was a gram scale. And I also got this one on Amazon. I think it was about 11 bucks. Um, you need to be able to measure two grams of poop. So I went out and I just um, use Ziploc baggies, kind of turn them upside down and grab them from each one. And I'll take a, a Sharpie to mark what my sample's from. So we're doing Catlin today. And I've got a couple of berries in here. I just want to kind of mush my berries all together. You need two grams of poo. And so measure that out on your scale. And this is where I use my little knife to pull bits out. You want to get a little bit from a couple of different berries, not all from the same spot. So two grams. In there. That was 0.8. It seems like it's about two berries worth. It's about two grams. Now that you have your sample, you're going to need 60 milliliters of the flotation solution. And this is a 50 milliliter beaker. So I usually use 30 and then 30. So it will hold 60. It just doesn't have the measurements on it for it. So 30, and then I'm gonna put just a little bit in here with my sample and mush that up. If you try to add it all at the same time, it's just really hard to mush everything. Up. And yes, I'm gonna make bunny gross faces while I do this, because you. <laughs> All right, that's 
all mushed. So I'm gonna add the rest of this 30 and stir it up. And get the other 30. So just wanna make sure it's all liquefied real well. And there are gonna be bits of hay and stuff, but you want everything else to kind of be a, a slurry. All right, once you've got that, you need to strain this through your beaker or through your sieve into your beaker. And now this is the part that you gotta kind of work a little fast on. The eggs, the worm eggs, are going to float, hence the flotation solution. So you don't wanna give it time to float before you get your sample. So you wanna get all that out of here. I'm gonna dump this into my, set this in my trash can out of the way. All right. So kind of keep this swirling up and moving and grab your sample out. And you want to fill, a, I don't know if you can see on this, there's a, set this down. Does this show? Can you see Chase? There's a grid on here and it, there, there's a chamber in between two parts of the slide. You want to get the um, sample in, I've got to do it this way, I was trying to do it the other way so you could see better, in between the two chambers on the slide. So there's one. I'm going to stir up and I'm going to grab a little bit more like that and fill my other side. And you don't have to fill the whole thing, you just have to fill where the grid is. So those are ready to go. And real quick, I'm going to set up, if you just have the test tube, how to go about doing that. Um, so I actually have a little more solution than I would generally use just to do the test tube method. But you want to fill up the test tube. I hope I've got the right size test tube here. I haven't done this way in a while. But you want to fill it up to the top till you just have like a, I do good, like a meniscus over the top, like a little bubble over, oops, stripping down the side a little bit. But see how it's bubbled over the top of the test tube there? But it's not dripping off the sides. Is that major cat bite, that's fun. Okay, once you've got it like that, I'm gonna add a tiny bit more because these bubbles are popping. Okay, there we go. Once you've got it like that, you wanna take a slide cover and just set it, oops, I have two slide covers. Anyway, so set it over the top, just like that. Now to look at these under the microscope, you want to start on the smallest magnification. And when you um, focus your, on your slide, there are gonna be two planes on these slides because it's a double chamber slide. You're gonna have one plane um, that's gonna kind of focus at the bottom and then one that's gonna focus up on the top uh, where the actual grid is. And you wanna focus on the top. And the way you can often tell that you're on the right plane is it's gonna be the one where the air bubbles show up. So if you're focused on the air bubbles on your sample, then you're also focused on where the worms are gonna be. So let it sit about 30 seconds for all those eggs to rise up. And then start. we're gonna start just going through the grid um, down one and up the other and counting any of the eggs that we see within our grid marks. All right, so going down one side, I am focused on my bubbles and I'm just gonna work up the grid this way and then down the grid and she's looking really clean. So far I'm down two rows and we don't have any eggs. If there are any on the outside, you don't want to count those. Anything that's outside the blue lines, anything that falls over a blue line, I do count. But anything that's outside of your blue grid doesn't count. So you want to count up uh, both sides on your slide. And once you have a number, which she doesn't have any because we wormed her not too long ago. Once you have a number, you're going to multiply that by 100 and that is going to be your eggs per gram. So if you found three eggs, it, she would have a worm count of 300 
eggs per gram or EPG. And I'm very happy to say that she does not have any worms and a few is usually quite normal. So this is really good that there's nothing in there. Okay, well, we didn't see anything in the smaller sample on the McMaster slide. Um, by doing this test tube method, it's basically gonna show you everything that is in the whole sample because all the eggs that are in that whole sample are gonna float to the top and they're gonna stick to your slide cover. So for this, you just need a plain slide then and you need to lift up the slide cover and plop it down on your slide. Once you've done that, put it under in focus. And I really have gotta refocus this. And once you've got that focus, then you can look around and see if you can see any eggs. You're not gonna get an accurate eggs per gram count on this like you would with the McMaster slide, but at least it'll give you an idea if there is anything in the sample. So if you see a ton of eggs in there, you know you probably need to worm her. Um, if there's nothing, then you don't have anything to worry about. So I was hoping to actually find an egg so I could get, I mean, it sounds weird to hope you found an egg, right? Um, but I wanted to find at least one so I could get a picture and show you, but I might have, I might have some pictures of a, another sample that I can share. So I found a couple of eggs in it this way, so I'll, I'll get a picture and, and put those up here for you. Uh, when it comes to egg identification, uh, there's a good resource over on fiascofarm.com and I will link that down in the description. Uh, they've got pictures of the most common types of worms and what the eggs look like and you can compare what you see in your sample to that. Usually we just see barber pole uh, around here. Oh, they, these look like they might be a kind of strongel. Um, I'm gonna, gonna have to look that up. They're, they're a little different looking than I'm used to seeing. So I hope that helps. Um, once you have all the equipment, it's really a lot handier to have this stuff at home and be able to do it at home. Um, thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and we'll be back with more cheese videos soon.